Hey, it's Nootsie, and today we're going to talk about extrasensory perception, ESP, intuition, internal guidance system, that science is proving that we really do have it. And ancient teachings um, have known this for years, and it's so cool to see how science is really showing that it's true. And many of the big leaders say that science is the modern language of the mystical and the spiritual. So we're going to talk about one such organization, the HeartMath Institute, and how they have shown that our internal guidance system puts any man-made GPS internal guidance system to shame. So I'm super excited we get to talk about this today. So let's first cover the experiment that the HeartMath Institute did. And so they took 10 people and they repeated this experiment over and over again with different people. And they sat them down in front of a computer screen while they were hooked up to all kinds of equipment um, that would measure their brain function, their brain waves, and their body electrically and magnetically. And then on the computer screen, essentially they would have a 10 second blank screen and then it would be followed by a randomly generated photo and there were two kinds of photos. One of them would be something calming like a pretty little bunny or some sort of nice scene in nature. And when we see these kind of things, what it does is it causes the body to emit a chemistry that is rejuvenating, life affirming, and so the other kind of photo that would be randomly generated would be something really scary, like a snake getting ready to bite, or like a horrible car accident. And the body responds to those kind of scenes in the fight, flight, or freeze survival uh, mode. So the body produces that kind of chemistry. And so how it would work, it would be 10 seconds, blank screen, and then a randomly generated photo of those two different types. And what was really, really cool is they found that actually during those 10 seconds, six seconds before the next photo came up, the body would respond and accurately respond as if the photo was already up on the screen. So what does that mean? That means what they found that in this data that our body is continually scanning the environment for future events. And it really predicts accurately, and especially if you're in heart-brain coherence, it responds accurately to whatever is going to happen before it happens. So let's talk about how we can practically hone the skill and use the skill most of us, or many of us, have been taught that it's all about the brain. You don't want to follow your heart, you'll get hurt for sure. But really, that's not true. They found that the heart is 5,000 times stronger magnetically than the brain. And the heart is 100 times stronger electrically than the brain. So it really is more about the heart. And I'm a student, I study Dr. Joe Dispenza's work, and he says, you know, you can't think your way out of a problem. You'll just end up making the problem worse if you're thinking with the same brain that created the problem. So we really need to tune in and learn how to access our heart center. Now, we all know that we have a physical heart, but we actually have an energetic heart. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to hook us up to machines and see what's going on electrically and magnetically with our heart. So the heart is the portal to higher states of information and thinking. And the Heart Math Institute teaches that there are three steps that we can do to actually access this supernatural internal guidance system, this GPS, this extrasensory perception, this intuition. So the three steps. Step number one is to bring your awareness from your brain down into your heart. And the easiest, best way to do that is to touch your heart center. We do that a lot of times when we're talking about something that really has affected our heart. And even there are, there's a, a Bible verse and other traditions have this same saying that you need to guard your heart with diligence for out of it flow the issues of life. So just by touching the heart center, we draw the attention away from the brain and down into the heart. The second step is breath. 
slowing your breathing down. We all know that when we have like panting type breath, it actually causes the body to go into fight, flight, or freeze, or survival mode. And so by slowing, intentionally slowing the breath down, we create a better heart-brain coherence. The communication between the heart and the brain are more coherent. And when I first started doing this kind of breathing, I would do three seconds in and out of my heart, and then I moved to five, and then seven, and now I do like nine seconds, a slow breath into the heart, and a slow breath out of the heart. And then the third step is to bring up one of four elevated emotions. Now there are other emotions, but these four they found worked extremely well. The first one was gratitude. The second one is appreciation. The third one is care and compassion. So it could be any one or a combination of those four emotions with the other two behaviors that caused the brain and the heart to be more coherent. And actually what happens is the brain surrenders to this intuition, this GPS, this ESP heart center that we have, and, it, and we have access to information that we wouldn't normally be able to have when we're just thinking out of our brain. So what does all this mean and how do we practically apply it in our life? This isn't something that has to take a long time. I usually just put some kind of a three or four minute song on and I do these three steps. And what they have found is when we get in heart brain coherence, not only does it cause us to be able to access super cognition or information that we wouldn't normally have access to, but we have super memory and we have super recall, but it also benefits other people. And so when you get a big group of people together that are in heart-brain coherence, it actually will entrain people who are not in heart-brain coherence. So we can literally affect other people's um, electromagnetic or electrical field by us being in heart-brain coherence. And then we can have this intuition on demand. We can make better emotional decisions. We can know what words to say, what words not to say. Also, we begin to have synchronicities and things begin to happen in our life that we wouldn't nor ordinarily see because we weren't tuned into our heart center. So I would love to know if you practice heart-brain coherence or if you're going to start practicing heart brain coherence, just a three or four minute thing that you can do every day or a couple times a day, it really does make us supernatural because we truly, truly are more powerful than we have known up until this point, but science is certainly beginning to show us how supernatural we really are. So I'd love for you to give me a thumbs up if you like this video. I would love to know your comments. If you are already practicing heart-brain coherence, or if you have any questions, I'd love to answer those. So until the next time, be blessed.